Are you looking for a Kanban board template in Excel? Perhaps something just like this, or maybe even something a little bit more simple, just like this. Well, in today's video, I'm gonna be showing you exactly how to create both of these templates from scratch. Now, if you are short of time, I have made both of these available for instant download. There will be a link in the description down below if you do want to pick them up. Nevertheless, let me now walk you through exactly how to create these and also make some suggestions along the way. So the first thing that I would recommend that you do is just give your document a title, just so that anyone who kind of comes in here knows exactly what they're looking at. So you could put Kanban board, Kanban board template. It could be Cam Kanban board for, you know, the project it is. Let's just put that in there now as a placeholder. You get the idea. I've put that in B1. Now what I'm gonna do here is bold this. I'm also gonna increase the font, all accessible via the home ribbon. Let's just put that up to 20. And then I'm gonna select from A1 through to say M1 and just put a color background here. It can be any color that you like. It's, it could be company branding colors, etc. What I'd recommend that you do at this point is just give yourself an area to add important elements of information about the project. So it could be start date. It could be days. So obviously the start of the project, the days that the project has been running for, progress, and also updated by. You could also put updated date as well. I'll put that in as well, because uh, that's also useful to document. I'm gonna bold these. So select B3 to F3, bold. I'm gonna put a slight little gray on these just to differentiate them as headers. And I'm gonna put all boarding around this. So on the home ribbon here, I'm gonna go all borders and you'll see that it is, yeah, create this little kind of table. Now don't worry too much about the um, size of the columns at the moment, because we're gonna be moving those in a second. The next thing we're gonna do is add task members assigned. And I'm gonna go from B6 through to F6. I'm going to bold. I'm going to select um, merge and center on this one. And I'm gonna put a gray here. And then I'm gonna put name in here. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna select from B6, because it's merged, it's taking me to F6 as well. But B6 through to, let's go to 12, all borders. And I'm gonna put this in a gray as well. So now we can start documenting names here. Well, one thing we could actually do is we could put initials in and that's going to be useful later and we'll soon see. We'll bold, bold both of those. And then, um, yeah, that'll be particularly useful. And then we can start documenting in here. Um, and we could also start doing that, you know, here as well. We'll just keep it nice and com compact. Probably don't need this column, actually. Let me see if I can get rid of that quickly. Just move that out. Let's get rid of that one. And just do that one. There we go. And then we could do... Oh, that should be merge and 10. No. I'm going to select these and then merge and center, merge and center. And I'm just going to do that as well like that. Just so that, yeah, we can keep this box nice and con concise. Now we're going to do the Kanban board. So I'm literally going to write that here, Kanban board. And I'm going to bold that and I'm going to make that larger as well. And now we're going to build the board itself. So the column headers that we're going to want are backlog. And we'll work on the formatting as we go. To do in progress. We're going to want review slash testing and also complete. I'm going to bold all of these. Now at this point, I'm going to start playing around with the column headers a little bit. So I'm going to select column B. I'm going to hold shift on my keyboard and go through to F. And I'm going to find this little, I'm going to hover over between B and C, the columns. You'll see this little icon display. Left click on my mouse and I make the width bigger. So I want the width to be about, about here for now. So around 22. I'm gonna make this bigger here. So I'm gonna go to row 15. I want this to be slightly larger. I'm gonna go all of these. So B15 through to F15. I'm going to, in the alignment, I'm gonna center them. I'm gonna put them in the middle and I'm also gonna increase the font size as well a little bit. Now for backlog, we go, I'm gonna suggest that we use like a light blue. That works particularly well. To do, I'm gonna go for a light orange. In progress, that's naturally gonna be a greeny kind of color. So I'm gonna select this color here. Review testing, we'll go for a gray. And then for complete, um, no, in, in progress should have been a light yellow. Sorry, of course, it should have been light yellow. Complete is going to be our green because that obviously indicates completion. Now what we're going to do in row 16 is drag all this, this one all the way down. You'll see that. So I'm going to, I've hovered over 16. You'll see that little icon there. And I'll go to about, let's go to 
let's go to three around 350 for now we can always make this larger if we need to i'm actually gonna make the column headers a bit bigger actually i'm gonna make these slightly larger because i think that would be just be better now what we want to do here is i'm going to select h the column there and just make this bit bigger i'm going to press control C in column F15, I'm going to go into H15 and press Control V. Now what I'm going to be doing here is be setting up the assigned to section. I'm going to put this in a light grey. I just copied and pasted that across because I wanted the bolding really and the centering and all that other formatting. Let's put that in a grey here or a darker grey. We'll go a bit darker. We'll go this one and then we'll change the font to white. And I'm going to do the same next door, but I'm going to do, well, not in the right next door, I'm going to do it in J, make this a bit bigger. Actually, what we got here, 26. So let's make this 26. Let's make it exactly the same. It doesn't have to be precise, but roughly 26. Actually, let's make this, make this one a little bit shorter, so around about 25. Control C, Control V, and I'm going to type in here, I am going to type in task card. Excellent. So we're getting there. Now I'm going to put some borders around this. So B15 through to F16. Do that. I'm going to do the same here around H15 and H16. I'm going to do the same here. Just give it that little, give it that little border so that once we remove the grid lines, which you can do via view grid lines, you'll see it's just put that table in if you like. Could also put these in the middle if we wanted to something like this. And we could just do the same here as well. So I'm on the home ribbon and it's just it's just formatting just to make it look visually better. Now what we're going to do is set up the assigns to. So we're going to set up little little icons, if you like, that we can drag across to our Kanban board to specify who's working on what. So very, very easy. All we need to do is click on insert. And then I'm going to suggest that we use icons. We can convert this to a shape in a minute. Click on icons. And then when this pops up, just type in person. Now you can use anyone you like the look of really here, but I'm gonna use this one, uh, it kind of makes sense. Click insert and you'll see it brings this up. I'm gonna bring this over here. I'm gonna make it slightly smaller and let's just put that kind of in the center. At which point, when you're selected, it will take you to this graphics format on the top. We're gonna to convert this to a shape, okay? And there's a reason why we're doing that in a minute. Uh, I'll walk you through. Now what we want to do is I'm going to right click on here and I'm going to look for, there's a text option. Now if you double click in that little body area, look, you'll see it enables you to enter text. So what I want to put here is some initials. So that's the in initials of the individual. Now I'm going to double select that and we need to change the font to white so we can see it in this example. So I'll just put random initials in, double click this again, and I'm going to put that in the center. So we've got one individual here. Now you can change the colors of the different individuals as well. So I'm going to press, so I'm going to select all of this and press control C and I'm going to press control V. So we've got another one. Let's put them there again, let's put them there again. Let's put them there. So you can have as many assigned to, it depends obviously on how many team members are working on your project. And then we're just gonna change the colors of these individuals. So if we select the second one, I'm gonna change this to, and let's start with the first one actually. Let's go, let's go with, I'm just gonna use random colors for now, but you can use colors that make kind of sense uh, for you and your organization, or that could indicate, you know, you could color code this so that, you know, blue is a, a particular type of team member, if you like. And then you could relate this back to a key if you wanted to. But let me just use these ones for now. They are merely placeholders. But as I say, having colors coordinate with different responsibilities maybe is useful. So we're going to use those for now. And obviously, these will be different. You know, let's say Peter, Peter Ray, PR. And let's go um, Haley Stevenson. And then let's just go. So these are initials essentially that are going in here. And then let's go for Barry Newman. Lovely. And then we're going to set up the task card. So here, what we're going to do here is we're going to go insert and we're going to go uh, shapes. At this point, we are going to look for this little icon here, which is a rectangle. And I'm going to select it like this. Drag this across like this. Now I'm going to just change the color first, just so it's lighter. So in the shape format, shape fill, I'm going to change this to, we'll go for a light uh, blue for now. And we're gonna right click and we're gonna put, oh no, double double left click on the mouse and it will enable us to start typing text. So here we can put the title. Now make this make all the text uh, black so we can see it. And you could also you know, put bold on the title say. We're gonna put underneath, so I've pressed return there. We're gonna put details, so you can put the details of the, we're not gonna have that in bold. 
the details of that task, status, so we can put the status of the task. So this is all placeholder for now. And then we're gonna put points as well, so we can document that. At which point I'm gonna come off of that, then I'm going to select it, press Control C, Control V, and I'm gonna bring this down here. At which point I'm just gonna change the color. So we're gonna go, let's go for a light. Uh, again, this is where you may want to color code it. Uh, let's go for, I'm gonna go for like a light purple. Because that's probably a bit too, bit too dark. I want this to be a bit more subtle. So we'll put that up a bit more like that. There you go. Control C, Control V. Let's do one more. Just get them all in like that. And then you just want to, yeah, as I say, the color coding can be really, really useful. There's so many different ways that you can leverage color code. And I'll walk you through some of those in a minute of, of how you could do this. But let's just put different colors in here just to differentiate them all. And then more colors. And then let's just go, I'm literally just finding anything here. There we go, all different. So basically how you would then use this template, it's complete, is you would start to, let's just say, backlog, you could, there's a task here. You could put, you could drag it across. So what, you, what you'd want to do is this is essentially these two, you don't, you know, you're, you're creating copies from them. You don't drag them from them. So as an example, let's say you want to set up a task in backlog. You'd select this one. Obviously you choose this color accordingly. Control C, Control V, and then you drag it where it needs to go. And let's just say Peter is working on it. Control C, Control V, and then you'd put this over like this or something like that, or you'd put it in like where, wherever you could. You know, that's exactly how you basically work with it. So that is the first template, perhaps a little bit more advanced, which is why I've gone through that one first. The second template, which um, is, is great actually, it's very, it's simple, it's easy to use. It's probably less, um, it's less visual, but let's just run through it. So essentially what you'd be doing here, again, I'd recommend just having a title. So Kanban board, you can put that in B2 or A1 or B1 if you like, doesn't really matter. All we're looking to do here is differentiate it. I'm gonna make this bigger and I'm gonna put that all in a in a dark gray, a little bit lighter than that. We'll go with this one. So we've got our title in. Again, you can choose different font, different colors, depending on your particular needs. Now what we're gonna do is just create the different column types. Now I'm actually just gonna copy across, copy and paste these just to save time for you. But essentially what you'd be doing here is you'd be just writing them backlog to do in progress, etc. cetera, making, maybe, make, making them maybe slightly bigger and putting the color coding in. I'm gonna select from B to, through to F and I'm going to go in the middle and just bring this across like this, just so we can get that. And then what we're gonna do at this particular moment in time is we're gonna bring five down to here, around about 120, that looks good. In six, we're gonna make this narrow. So let's go 8.25. And then what we can do here is if you select this, press Control C, then go into seven, Control V, it copies the formatting. Go into six, put that in at eight, and you'll notice what this is doing, it's creating these little cards so that when I go select all of these from B5 through to F5 and then put this board around, you'll see that kind of card effect. Now, each one of these would indicate a new task. So it's a slightly different way of working, um, but it's really useful. Let's press Control C on here, Control V. And actually by doing that, we've got that card in place. We just need this little one. I'm gonna go in here, press 10, Control V, and I'll do the same seven, Let's go in 11. So let's do that for now. But every time you wanted new card, you know, new cards created for each one, you'd essentially just do that process, what I just showed you. So that is essentially how you do it. And basically how you'd populate this is you would put a different color in. Obviously there's different options here and I'll walk you through a couple of those in a second. But let's just say you wanted, you know, to go with priority. So you could have red for high priority, orange for medium priority, and yellow for low priority. So let's just say this was a low priority task. You could then put something like, you know, task title in here, um, press control, enter, oh, not control, shift, enter, oh, not shift, enter either. How do I get on the next line? Is it control, enter on your keyboard? No, shift, enter, no. Basically what I'm trying to do is drop onto the next row. I can't remember the shortcut. I'll leave that in the description below. Um, but there's a short, it might be Alt, sorry, I've just found it. Alt space on your keyboard if you're using Windows. I think if it's, if it's a Mac, it's Command, so it's, um, Enter, and that'll bring you on to the next row. Then you need to put something like Task Details. Again, so Command, Enter, it will be, um, you know, Assignee or something like that, you know, who's on it. 
or you can put that at the bottom. I'm going to press command space with space. Uh, let's just see what I've put in here. Just keep status, story points. So status. Basically, anything that any information you need on that card, which helps provide the context that's required. If you're using, say, a priority as the color coding, then you wouldn't need to put it in here. If you wanted to use the color coding for um, status as the, the card color, so as an example, green could be on track, yellow could be at risk, red could be blocked, then you just switch it out. So essentially, status wouldn't be included in here. Hopefully that makes sense. I'm going to put a sign E. And that's how you basically do it. But that's placeholder content. Obviously, you'd put the real information in. You might want to bold that one as well. And you just do that. And you'd fill it out accordingly. And then you could even copy and paste if you wanted to, just to save yourself a little bit of time. Now, as I say, you can have the color coding for priority levels, task status. It could be even task type. So you could do blue for feature or product development. You could do purple for bug fix. You could do teal or something like that for administrative or non-technical tasks. You could do deadlines as well as the color coding. Something like gray is no deadline, green means deadline has been met or is on time, orange could be that you're approaching your deadline, red could be overdue. You get the idea, you could even do it down to a signee as well. You could do blue for a developer, purple could be QA, green could be a product manager, yellow could be marketing. So various different options here. And you could even make it even more simple than that, do it with effort or complexity. So light colors could indicate low effort or simple tasks and dark colors high effort or complex tasks. Nevertheless, you have two different Canboard templates that you can leverage here. I hope this video has been useful. Any questions, comments, feedback, drop them down below. With that said, best of luck, over to you, and I hope you have an excellent day.